Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Yogesh Rawat, and I will be your instructor for this advanced computer vision class. So here are some of the details. Here's my email ID, my office. So the class will be 3 to 4, 15, Tuesdays and Thursdays. You know the location. Office hours will be uh, 2 to 3 Thursdays. This is like just before the class on Thursday. But of course, I will be also available by appointment. You can write me an email. So whenever I'm available, I will call you. We also have extra discussion session. And it will be Wednesday, 4.30 to 5.30. It will happen in 356, but this location might change. And this discussion session, it will not happen like every week. It will only happen if you guys need some extra help. And we need to like discuss something more about a paper, which we have discussed during that week. So this will not be a regular thing. And I will inform you if this happens on Tuesday's class. So I'm. Assuming you have taken this CAP 5415 computer vision class. So here's the course website. Let me open that. So most of the details will be available here. And So this link I have posted on the web courses. I hope you have access to that. You can check the announcement. So you don't have to copy the link. So all the details like the office hours and these details like about the presentation review, the rehearsals. I will talk about these in detail later. And there are some other details. You can go through this, the grading policy, late assignments, and what topics we are going to cover. The other important thing will be the schedule. So today we'll just have this introduction. So what we are going to do is we are going to record all the lectures in this course. So you guys will be presenting papers. So we will record it and we will publish it online in this website as well as like on our YouTube channel for CRCV. So everything will be available after the classes. Now some initial lectures I have already scheduled. So Today, I will give you a like brief introduction of what this course is going to be about. The next lecture, I will cover. I will also cover some overview of deep learning today, if time permits. Otherwise, in the next lecture, Thursday. Then next week, uh, so next week, we'll have a presentation. Uh, it will be from Kevin. This is our recent work in ICCV. So he will talk about that work. So that will also give you some idea what kind of presentations is like expected in this classroom. And so for this paper, you don't have to write any report. But for next week onwards, after that presentation, for each paper, you will have to write a report. I will cover that later, like what are the specific specifics of that. Then for the programming assignments, we will provide you GPU access. We have a high performing cluster here. So you, you can use that. Uh, and we might have a presentation about like how to access that cluster, how to use the GPUs. And but we are not sure whether this is going to happen or not. If it happens, it will happen on 15th of January. And the location we don't know yet. So I will announce like where the location will be. After that, for 16th and then 21st. So two papers are already scheduled. So two students from this class will present these two papers. And then after that, on 23rd, there will be no class. I will be away during this week, but I will reschedule that class. And after that, I haven't scheduled like who is going to present these papers. I have put these papers. It's a tentative list. It's going to change. And there will be some more papers after that. 
So what I want from you guys is you can go through this list, and if you think you are interested in presenting that paper, just let me know, drop me an email, and I will put your name for, for that paper. OK? So right now, these are like, I think, four or five papers, but there will be more. So it will be like, depending upon how many students are going to attend, I will increase the list. So now, going back to the presentation. So any questions so far? OK. So yeah, you can contact me by email. And don't forget to like put this in the subject. Otherwise, like I will miss that email, and you might not get immediate response. So if you want like me to answer pretty quickly, just use this as a subject. And if you don't use me, I will reply, but it might take some time. Because I will not know like this is coming from one of the students of this class. So today what I'm going to do is I will cover like what this course is going to be about. And I will, if time permits, I will cover like some brief introduction to deep learning some of the concepts, which will be useful for you like to follow this course and to do the programming assignments. So the first objective of this course is like to uh, provide you an overview about the computer vision research, what is being done these days, what are the state of the art methods, what are, what are the different problems for which researchers are trying to solve. And so these days there are a lot of data sets because data set is very important to solve any computer vision problem. So you will be aware of like what different type of data sets are uh, out there, uh, which you can use to actually solve uh, problems. Then you will know like what are the evaluation metrics, what are the methods. And more important is like it will help you to improve your uh, analytical skills, how to understand a paper, how to do research. So this is an advanced uh, graduate level course. So I'm assuming that most of you are graduate students. So are there any undergrad students in this class? OK, three. So what's your background? Uh, mostly computer vision. Computer vision. So you are in the CS department or yeah. CS department? How about you? CS department. OK. Yeah, more or less the same. Same. OK, why don't we have a quick introduction? Like, tell me like your name, then what course you are studying, studying like whether you're a graduate student, whether you're a PhD student, and from which department you are coming. Hi, all. Uh, my name is Surender Devasundra, and I'm a graduate student pursuing my master's in electrical engineering. So I have taken computer vision course in the previous semester. For this semester, I'm taking advanced computer vision, machine learning, and uh, cyber-physical systems. So master's first year or second year? Uh, first year. First year, OK. All right, uh, I'm Kobe. Um, taking advanced computer vision right now. I've taken uh, regular computer vision a year ago and uh, machine learning last semester. Um, pretty much my interest in research is computer vision, uh, computer vision. OK. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ben. Um, my last semester is an undergrad. Um, uh, I took uh, machine learning and computer vision last semester. And my name is Tanuj, and I'm in the first year of my master's degree in computer science. And in the last semester, I taken machine learning and computer vision and analysis of algorithms. So, machine learning, Dr. Bakchi, or some no, other course? This is Okay. My name is Andrea, and this is my first semester here at UCF. I'm a computer science. So uh, master student or PhD student? Uh, it's PhD. PhD, OK. Hi, my name is Mahavi. This is my second semester. I'm a master student. And in last semester, I took computer vision. So this is the second course I'm taking in computer vision. OK. Uh, my name is Sagata. Uh, uh, louder, please. Yeah. Can't hear you. My name is Sagata. Mm -hmm. Here in the graduate studies. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, I took the undergraduate degree from this course last semester. And I'm just continuing on with the counseling. All right. Hi, I'm Stephen. I'm a second semester PhD student, and I did take computer vision last uh, term. Um, and I'm interested in the topic of the course. Okay. Thanks. Okay, my name is Xian Hong, and uh, I'm the first, uh, second semester. Um, of master in computer science, and uh, uh, last semester I didn't choose the computer vision, but uh, um, uh, but I uh, I have previous uh, research uh, in video classification, and uh, all my work was was sub submit to the CVPR. Okay, this year. Okay, that's good. Yeah, last year. All right, yes. you already have experience. That's yeah. good. <coughs> Yes. I uh, am Ravi. I'm a PhD student in uh, in data production and uh, my research is machine learning and computation. So I'm interested in this course. Okay. Hi, I'm Ms. Kritika. This is my first semester and I'm majoring in Master's in Computer Science. Mm -hmm. So this completely no both course. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm Nick, um, first year master's student, and I'm doing my thesis with Dr. Gita on uh, video inspections with NASA Ames. Uh, I'm Shweta, uh, I'm a second semester PhD student uh, associated with CRC. I work with Dr. Shah. And this is a more relevant course for me because it explores the latest state of the art in the computer vision field. So it's very relevant for I'm Sean. I'm a second year master's student and I just took the pre -reg, um graduate course last semester and I'm interested in the field. My name is Alex. Uh, this is my second semester as a master's student. I'm my undergraduate here and I've been focused on computer vision since my senior year, I guess. Well, my name is Rohit and uh, I've been working, so I'm a second semester PhD student and I've been working on computer vision research for the last few years. I have not done the course in last month. Yeah. Hi, uh, I am Ishan. Uh, I am a PhD student in uh, CRC Villa and it's my second semester. So I am working with uh, Professor Mubarak sir and uh, Dr. Rawat. Yeah. Okay, my name is Robson. Uh, I'm a PhD student in computer vision and electrical engineering. Um, I took computer vision last semester, so I wanted to take this class to develop more of my computer vision skills. My name is Jack Weiss, a second year a PhD student in computer science. My focus is actually in reinforcement learning. Hi, I'm Savannah. I'm doing second semester in computer engineering, and I've taken the computer vision course last semester. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Sudarshan. Uh, I'm a second year PhD student, and I've taken computer vision last semester. Taking this and very recent. Hi, I'm Sudeep. Uh, I'm a second year PhD student in the research department. Uh, last semester I took uh, machine learning and computer vision. This semester I'm taking electrical uh, language processing and advanced computer vision. My name is Calvin. I'm a second semester PhD student uh, in CS. I currently do research in manifold learning for in, uh, images for CRCV. Uh, my name is Kat. I'm a second semester PhD student. I took a computer vision back at my old um, college, and I'm taking this class to help me with uh, like tracking algorithms for surveillance and stuff like that. Um, hi, my name is Deeksha. Uh, this is my first semester master's student. Uh, I've taken computer vision, machine learning, and design and analysis of algorithms. Yeah, hi, I'm Priya. This is my uh, first semester and master's in computer science. I'm here to just know about the course of this subject. Okay. I'm Dax. Um, I, this is my last semester of undergrad, um, and I'm going to go into the e accelerated master's. Um, I'm just trying to get some more uh, background knowledge on the um, on like the cutting edge um, fields in like computer vision, machine learning, and uh, computer science before moving to industry. Okay. I'm Adro. This is my second semester as a master's student for computer science, and uh, I took computer vision last semester, and I'm interested in the field, so I look forward to learning more. Hey, I'm uh, Yannick Roberts, um, second semester PhD student, working under Dr. Alvin Bahol with a focus on robot perception. 
Uh, my name is William Soria. I'm a first year master's computer science student, and I'm taking this course to expand my knowledge of computer vision. Okay. You came late? Oh, yes. yeah. My name is Abraham. I've been I'm doing my second semester here. Interesting in computer vision. Okay. PhD? Oh, no, no. Master's. Yes. Okay. So, how many PhDs? Can you raise your hand? Okay, half of them. Okay. And how many of you like already know deep learning? No. No means you have done some <laughs> you mean you have done some project and the basics. Okay, almost all of you. Okay, that's good. And how many of you don't know like haven't done any project on deep learning? Okay. Two. That's fine. Okay, so this will be the first objective of this course. And to <clears throat> achieve this, what we are going to do is we have a list of papers, some of the recent research papers from top venues. And we will read those papers. One of you is going to present one paper uh, in each class. And so what you will learn is how we should reach a, a read a research paper. So the idea is you should ask as many questions as you can before you start. You should know like what's the motivation, why this paper was published, why they actually did that work. And then after that, you should know like what is the exact problem they are trying to solve and what's the solution they are proposing. And if they have proposed something, have they evaluated that method or not? Method or not? And if they have evaluated like what kind of metrics, what kind of evaluations they have done, and what kind of experiments they have performed, so, and the most important thing is like, what is the exact contribution of that paper? Is it like something new? Are they trying to solve a new problem? Or is it a, like existing problem, but they have proposed a different solution, which is better than what's already out there? So this, I think, is the most important thing when, when you read a, a research paper. And then the other thing will be, once you have read that paper, you have understood it, then what can you do after that? Do you think like there is a future direction which you can have? I mean, you can use the same idea to solve some other problems, or you can actually extend the same idea to solve the same problem, but maybe it, it could be a better version of that. So that will help you, like, since most of you are like PhD students, so you are doing research, you know that. And it's important that once you are done with the paper, what are your own ideas, what you can do about that. So that's going to help you in doing your research. And the other thing is, if it's an existing problem, then what has already been done already? So you should know that. And then you should make comparisons that, yeah, so this is the point why it's different, why it's better. So that's also important. So. The most important thing here is like you can't read a research paper like just in one go, like you are reading a maybe a news article or some book or some novel. It's not going to work that way. You'll have to go through multiple iterations. And so this is like just uh, one way to read a research paper, and there are plenty others. I will just explain this how this works. So it's like four plus steps. You should at least cover four steps, and then depending on how well you have understood it, then you might have more steps to follow. So the step one is just read the title. So that will give you an idea what the paper is about, what problem they are solving, and what kind of approach they might have. So the title, the authors actually spend a lot of time in determining what the title should be. So it's not just that they wrote something and then they came up with a title and published it. So it's a very time consuming thing. So you should also spend some time on understanding the title. So if you spend some time, then even without reading a paper, you might get some idea that what this paper is about. So you don't have to do all these steps in one sitting. What you can do is if you have like one week to understand a paper for the first day, just follow the step one and then keep the paper away and then think about this. And then when, when you will come back to follow the second step, I think you will have a jump start because you will have a thought, pro thought process about the paper. You know the title. You know what the approach. So you will anticipate something from the paper. So that will help you 
in moving forward with the second step. So this is pretty simple, I think five minutes task. And the outcome is it will give you, some, uh, give you the idea what the paper is about. Then you can follow the second step. You should go ahead and read the abstract. So again, abstract it's pretty small. But again, when the authors are writing that abstract, it's the quantity of text, it's not proportional to the time they have spent in writing that. It might be like the whole method, they might have spent a week. Then again, they might have taken a week to write the abstract as well. So again, so that's why you should also spend some more time in understanding what they are saying. So if the paper is very well written, you will understand most of the paper by just reading the abstract. Then again, once you have read the abstract, you know a little more about the paper. Then again, you can scan the sections, see what's there in the paper. And in most of the computer vision papers, you will see you will have lots of figures explaining what the method is about, how it's actually working. So just going through those figures, following those, reading the captions will help you a lot in understanding the method. And similarly, like you should also read the conclusion with the abstract, so that will let you know like what they are actually promising. So this will be the outcome, that's fine. Now the third uh, step is you will go into more detail. And so these two steps are pretty simple, right? This is not going to take a lot of time. But this will be pretty helpful. In the third step, you should also read the introduction. So the introduction covers, it will talk about what's the motivation. If they are trying to solve a problem and if they have proposed a solution, they will try to also talk about the intuitions, why they think the solution should have worked, and what's the motivation, why they actually want to solve that problem. So that's really useful when you are actually going to the technical details later on, because those intuitions will help you understand the method better. So usually there is an overview of the approach, and in most of the papers you will find this. It just gives you an idea, an uh, overview picture of the solution they are proposing. So it's a good idea to cover this with the introduction. And then there will be figures. You can try to get some more ideas. And then look into like what results they are showing. What are the tables? What are the evaluation metrics? There could be just accuracies. They might be showing precision recall. So then you will know like if this is a problem, then what are the metrics usually used for the evaluation? And if you already know the, already know the problem in the area, then you will feel like I mean, some of the evaluation metrics are missing. They haven't shown the, those results. So all of this is like you haven't read the paper yet, but you know a lot about the paper. OK. Now this is the most time consuming step. and. Again, it will not stop at step four. After this, you will have to, I think, go more iterations in the beginning. But if you're expert in that area, you might end up like reading the paper just in step four. So it depends. So again, there will be many jargon words, many difficult words which you have never heard, uh, heard about before. So you should never actually look up those words in Google search or dictionary. Just ignore those words. Don't worry. Just move forward. Try to understand what you can in this reading. And by this time, you should have a good understanding of the paper, of the method. So this is mainly about reading the method, what they have proposed. So what will happen is, if the area is new to you, there will be many technical terms which you have never heard about. So don't worry about that. But still, you will be able to understand what they are trying to do. So that's a good start. But if you're expert in that area, you know all the words, then after reading a method very carefully, you should know like what's happening, what's the solution. And after this step, this is the time you should actually look up those keywords which you have, haven't understood. So this should come only after you have finished your single pass of the complete method. Then you can look up. And when you're looking up, don't refer back to the paper again. Just note down those keywords and try to understand what those keywords are independently. And then when you will come back, and try to read this, it will be easier for you. So this is like one suggestion, but I mean, different things work differently for different people. So what you can do is there is a, 
a good read like it's uh, by Dr. Mubarak Shah. You can go through this. It also like give you recommendations how you should read research papers. It's a lengthy read, but I think you should spend some time going through this. Again, this is a three-pass approach from Srinivas and Keshav, so you can go through this as well. It will also help you a lot. So that was the first objective. Uh, any questions? Can you go back to three really quick? More? Okay. No, thank you. So these slides will be available online. So you don't have to note it if you missed anything. So if you go through the course website, so the slides will be available here, and the video recording will be here. So this will be like for all the lectures. Any other question? No. Okay. Yes. How do you handle the reference section in the research paper? Uh, what do you mean by handle? While reading or yeah, while reading? Because it itself is a separate paper. Right. right. So if the area is uh, new to you, my suggestion is don't read the related works. Just ignore it. And once you have finished reading, you know that you have understood what they have done. Then you should refer back to related work and go through all the methods they are talking about. Then because now you have understood what this work is doing, how they are trying to solve this problem, then it will be easier for you to follow like the related work, what are the existing methods and what the solutions. Because they will have this correlation that this method is doing this, but this is not good enough because they have missed this part. So then it will be easier for you to follow that. So never go to related work before understanding the paper. And if you're expert in that area, then it won't take that long. You can just easily skim through that. Right? Because you might already know all those papers if you're an expert. Okay. So this we already covered. All right, so that was the first objective. The second objective is, given a paper, how you can write a good review of that paper. And by review, I mean how good that paper is. You should know what problem it's trying to solve. You should know not the solution, but the intuition and the motivation behind the solution. You should know like what are the strengths of this paper. You should know what are the weaknesses of this paper. And you should know like how the method was evaluated. And then you should also have some idea about what could be the future direction. So all those we are going to cover when we say that you're going to review a research paper. So you should know the strengths. The strengths could be novelty. Novelty could be like in terms of problem. The problem could be entirely new. It could be the solution, the solution they are proposing. It could be entirely new, not an incremental work. The technical correctness, almost in all papers are technically correct, but most of the times what happens is they write something in the paper, then they release the code later on, then when you go through the code, you try to run it, then you will see that the code is different, what they have done in the paper, it's different. So those kind of things happen. And this is the most important thing, the clarity, how well they have written the paper. So this is going to help you because when you write your own paper, it might be a very good work. But if you have not written it well, then the reviewers are not going to understand it. And of course, when the reviewers don't have like uh, a lot of time to go through your paper and try to understand, they will not do that. They will just read like a couple of times. If they don't get it, they will say it's a bad work, even though it was a very good work. That's why it's very important. Like whatever you write, it should be very clear and easy to understand. And then the evaluation. So your idea might be very interesting. You might be solving a very interesting problem, but then you haven't evaluated it. Maybe you have shown results just on one data set, and that might not be sufficient, because other papers in the same domain are showing results maybe for five or six data sets. So then you will have to see like how to evaluate if you're proposing something, if you're writing some paper. So those are the strengths. And weaknesses could be lack of novelty, again, those things, but those are missing. It could be technically incorrect. 
not clear and sufficient evaluation. So when you are writing your uh, evaluation, you will write the strengths and weaknesses, then you will have to justify why it's a strength or why it's a weakness. You can't, ju you can't just say like, I mean, the method is not novel. That's not sufficient. You'll have to say why it's not novel. So you'll have to justify each and every point you are putting. So that's the first part of the evaluation. The second and most important for the graduate students who are doing their research is how to think about the future directions. The future directions could be in two terms. The first could be, now you know the problem. Can you solve it differently? Can you have a better solution to that? The other could be, you might like the solution they have proposed, but you think if they would have done this thing differently or maybe slightly different, it would have been better. So it could be like you want to extend what they have proposed. And there could be other things as well. So you can, it could be like you use the same solution, but try it on a different problem domain. So you should be able to come up with the future directions of whatever paper you are reading. Okay. So open problem is like, even if they have solved some problem, it could be like there are some limitations, some challenges which they have not addressed. So that's like open problem that you can target when you propose the future, future research direction. All right. So that was the second objective. Any question in that? Now the third objective is you will learn how to present a research paper. So since each of you will present one of the paper in one of the lectures, so you'll have to learn how to do the presentation. And you will learn how to make good presentations. So the time limit will be 30 minutes. And so the class is one hour for uh, 15 minutes. 30 minutes will be the presentation. And the rest 45 we will have to discuss the paper. We'll have question answers. and. If we need more time, then we'll use Thursdays, that slot, for the discussion. So in most of you are graduate students, that's fine. But it could be you are not aware of that area uh, which the paper is actually trying to address. So when you're presenting, you'll have to assume that no one has read the paper before. It's entirely new to the audience. And that's how you'll have to cover all the basics, the problem, the motivations, and then go to the solution. So this is like a general guideline which uh, you will use in your presentations. And of course, when this will change based on the paper you are presenting. But more or less, this is going to be same. First, we'll have to talk about the motivations, why they are trying to solve that problem. And then you'll have to describe the problem. And then you will talk about like what was the main contribution of this research paper. And then we'll talk about the solution. Then the experiments they have shown. Then the comparisons, the conclusion. So this is like a general idea. But it might change. So don't worry about this right now. And again, we will have one-on-one -on -one meetings before the presentations. So we'll mo discuss more uh, during that session. So you will read and understand a research paper. And so you will have a better idea what are the research problems uh, which are being solved in computer vision research community. And you will learn like how to write a review for a paper. And that will help you in understanding research papers when you do your own research. You will also learn uh, how to present a paper. And then if you have your own ideas, how to evolve those. And so another part is which I haven't covered yet is you will have to implement some of the methods. So there will be three uh, programming assignments in this course. And you will also have like chance to implement your own ideas if you have any. All right, so grading. Each week, uh, there will be two presentations. So two papers will be presented. And for those papers, you will ha have to write a report. And that report will be in the format of the review, which I just discussed. I will uh, talk about the details, uh, the details later as well. That will cover 20% of the marks. And these reports 
so we used to have like two reports per week. Uh, last year we did like you can opt uh, just have one report per week. You can choose like which paper you want to write report for because the earlier one was too hectic. And this year I'm thinking like it should not be like uh, one paper per week because it could be you like both the papers in a week and then maybe in the next week you don't like any paper at all and you have like some other deadline for other coursework and you don't have time. So what I'm thinking is maybe what we can do is you need to submit reports just for 75% of the papers. So that, that will give you flexibility uh, in terms of, I mean, you can have both the papers on the same week and you can like skip multiple weeks as well if you have some other engagement. So which of the last two like you will prefer? Either it should be one paper per week or it should be 75% of the total papers. So one paper per week, uh, raise your hands. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 75%. So it's almost equal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we will see because I mean we can delay this because I think the first report is due next week. So I will let you know like uh, in Thursday's class, and we can do a poll if it's a draw. I like the seventy-five percent because you have some flexibility. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I'm not quite sure uh, if you have a paper per week. Oh, that might be advantageous over the 75%. You don't have that much flexibility. You have to do your report every week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you have other courses as well and you might be busy in certain weeks or if you are traveling, then that's a good strategy. But others who don't have any coursework, they will prefer like one paper per week because that's just 50%. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> <laughs> So it depends like what's your schedule. Right? You have, you have questions? Okay, yeah. Uh, say that louder. It's a single page report. It's a single, I will come to the format. It's a single page report, yes. So we can decide upon that later, that's fine. Uh, so the class presentation, uh, it's 20% and this presentation is the paper you are presenting. Okay. Then for attendance and discussion, it's 20%. So we are not going to have any attendance, that's fine. Because if you're not attending, then you're not learning anything. So we'll not take any attendance. But for discussion, we will have 20%. So discussion is like <coughs> after the student is finished uh, presenting the paper, then it will be open like to the floor, then you can ask questions. And you can have like suggestions, you can talk about future work, and that can be totally based on whatever reports you have submitted. So we'll have 20% for that. And the next is projects and programs, uh, that 40%. So we will have three projects, uh, one minor, the second one will also be minor, then the third will be major projects, so it will be like 10, 10, and 20 split. And for the projects, uh, it will be a code submission as well as a report submission. And we'll have deadlines for those. And for the programming, it doesn't matter which platform you use, so anything is fine. Okay, for late policy. So for the reports, since report is, it will be totally based on your understanding of the paper. So you will read the paper and then write something. In the class, the student is going to present so if you submit the report after that, it means like you have all those ideas from the presentation. So even if you don't read the paper, you can write a report. And then we'll have those discussions. So that's why if you submit after class, it will be straight zero. So you'll have to submit the report before the class. Okay? And the report will be for that paper which is being presented today. So if the class is starting at 3, then the deadline will be like before 3, report for that class. Yeah. Are you expecting a certain start to report? Yeah, I will come to that. Any other question? 
Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the the um, one report per versus uh, seventy five one per week versus seventy five percent. Mm -hmm. We'll have access to what the future papers are going to be, right? Um, and so we could actually start on papers that aren't due for a number of weeks. You can, yeah, you can. Okay. You can, and you can also like. You can also submit reports for all the papers. So it could be hundred percent. Then I will choose like the best seventy five percent. So it could be you have written a very bad report for a couple of them. I will just ignore those. Okay. Any other question? Okay. So for projects and programs. Uh, Usually what I will do is the deadline for the code will be earlier and then I will give you some time to write the report. So it could be like three to four days depending on like the project. And for both, the policy will be 20% 20, 20 off per day. So if you are like late by one day, your 20% marks will be deducted. So and that will be up to four days after that it will be a zero. So any questions on this? So for GPUs, uh, we have this uh, high-performing computing in the ISC department. They usually provide uh, the GPUs for the class uh, classworks. So you are going to get accounts for those. It's Linux-based. I hope in you, all of you are familiar with that. And so for each student, it will be a separate account. And so last year, we had this presentation uh, which talks about how you can use this system if you're not familiar with this. And we might have this uh, this year as well, but if we don't, then what you can do is we have the recording for last year. Yes, we do. So we have the slides as well. We have the videos. You can watch these later on. So if the class doesn't happen, then you can refer to this. And of course, I mean, if still you have doubts and you're not sure what to do, then we can discuss and We'll have a session where we'll arrange something for you. Okay, so that's GPUs. Now the report. So in, in each class, like one paper will be discussed. And so right now, I think four or five papers are there. You can choose among those. I will populate that list, make it longer. And usually we like make the list very long so you have option to choose from. Uh, but one thing will be you can also choose like uh, on uh, which date you want to present. And you want to do that as soon as possible because if a date is filled then I can't do anything about that. So you can write me an email just let me know like which slot you will prefer. And if I didn't hear back from you, then I will just randomly assign like slots to you. And also the papers, if you don't select a paper. The other thing is, uh, so most of you are already doing a PhD, right? So you might be doing, exploring some research area, and if that research area falls under this computer vision deep learning criteria, then what you can do is, you can suggest any other paper of your choice, it should be recent, it should not be very old. Uh, I will prefer 2019, but 2018 is, 18 is also okay if it's a very popular paper. And we can actually include that in the course. So just let me know if you want that. So you will have to read the paper before the class and write the report. So yeah, we already talked about this. It will be due just before the class. And all of you might, the, you already know like this web courses, right? So uh, most of the things will be announced in the web course. So you can, so do, do you get notifications like when I do the announcement or there's a discussion? You get that. So you get the announcement like, you got the announcement this morning? No. Web course is not published yet. Yeah. It doesn't appear on our dashboard. Probably not published It's not published. Published, yes or no, it says no. You mean the announcement or the course? Oh, okay, let me fix that. Oh, okay. 
cooking. Okay, can you see it now? Can anyone of you check? Yeah. It's there. Yeah. And you can see the announcement? Yeah. Okay, so for announcement, you will get the notification. Okay, that's good. And so what I will encourage is, I mean, if you have any questions, any doubts regarding the course or during the course, you can write me an email. That's perfectly fine. But you can also like have a discussion on this web course. I will respond on that as well. And then you guys can also discuss among each other. So I will encourage you to use that. That's really useful. And that will be useful not for your reports, but probably for your programming assignments. Because we'll have a lot of questions, then one of the other students can answer your questions. So that's a good media. So one student will be responsible. And 30 minutes presentation. So the schedule I have already shown you. And another good resource is what you can do is go to last year's website. Uh, so if you just change this 2020 to 2019, so then you can see like the list of papers we, uh, they have and also the videos and the slides are there. So if you just want to refer like what kind of presentation you'll have to make, that will be a good resource for you. Okay, so the reports will be maximum one page. And if it's more than one page, it's fine. I mean, I'm not going to give you zero, but I will not read the second page. So it should have uh, the summary of the paper. Don't make the summary too long. And I have actually given you a format, so you can use that. So in that format, I think five to six lines of summary, that's sufficient. Don't go over that. So what I'm trying to say is don't try to like fill in a space. Even if you write like a half-page report, if it's good, that's perfectly fine. No marks are going to be directed if it's less than one page. OK? So talk about the good points, the strength of the paper, the weaknesses of the paper. And if you have any questions, is there like any part in the paper which you are not able to understand? And then you can ask questions there. And if you think if you have any ideas like how that method can be improved or if they have, might have done something differently, it would have been better so you can put everything that in the ideas. So all of this is also going to help you during the class discussion. So because if you already have the questions, you can just ask those questions during the class, and then we can have a discussion. So I have a format. I will put this format on the web courses. Of course, it's also available in this slides. You can. You can just copy this. It's just one. Uh, it will be easier for you. It will be easier for me. I mean, if all the reports are the same format, I will not have to do any context switching. So the title, and don't format, reformat this. Don't change this. So just use it as it is. I will know, like, if you have changed. So put your name here, then a summary, the good points you have weak points, if you have any questions, and then your ideas. And you have one page. And don't worry if it's less than one page. That's perfectly fine. Don't worry if you don't have any questions. But you should have questions, because if you don't, then you haven't read the paper. So this is like one good example. Uh, you can go through this paper. This is a real paper. This is a real summary. Just for reference, you can go through this. And this link is available. It's uh, visible to everyone. You can just copy this and use this. Uh, the other thing was, so in the report, I will like advise just use your 
you have student ID, right? Everyone has. So when you name your file, just use uh, your ID and then last name in this format. It's not difficult for you, but it will make my life a lot easier. Because what happens is when I download these reports from the web courses, it's all messed up. So I don't know, like, if the name is messed up, I will not know, like, whose report this is. So I'll have to go through each report and then read your name in the paper. And that's not good for me. It's wasting my time. So just, it will be really helpful for me if you use this format. And not just for this report, also for your the code submissions and then report for those, uh, those, uh, those assignments. Just use the same format. Otherwise, it's like waste a lot of time and it's difficult. I mean, I'm not going to deduct any marks if you don't do this, but it's, it's good for me. So that's one thing. The other is, all right. So this, uh, uh, I have introduced this uh, bonus for reports. And I think it's good if someone, someone of you are like very motivated, you really like a paper, then you really want to test like if the code is available, you want to test as how it works, and if it's closely related to your research, it will be very beneficial for you. So what this bonus is, it will give you 20% extra marks. And what you have to do is, and again, so this is on top of, uh, apart from uh, the one page limit. This will go in the second page, right? So this I will read, I will not ignore this one. And the idea is, if the code is available, and you try running that code, and you are successfully able to do that, and you are also able to generate some results, some visualizations, or some numbers. And if you can show those in the report, that you did this, and you find these results, that was very interesting. You found these tables, so you will get like 20% extra for that report. So it's not mandatory, only if you're interested and you want. And this will be helpful like if you're not able to, so let's say we are doing uh, one report per week and you're not able to do like any report for a week, but then you have a chance like you can do this and you will catch up the grades. So it's an opportunity for you. Yes. This 20% out of this 100 20% of that report. So if that report is like uh, 10 points, and if you do this, you will get 12 points. Assuming that you get 10 points for a report. Does the figures add to the pages, or like, do you have to put on the first page? No, no, so this is apart from, oh, this is separate. Yeah. This is separate. So in the headline, just write bonus, and then you can, OK? Yeah, I think that's a good question. So. Whenever you do this, just write bonus on the page top so that I don't ignore it. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing is what you can do is, you want to make sure I don't miss this, just put a comment when you submit the report. So there is a comment section in the web courses. Just put a comment that I have submitted the bonus. So that will be easier for me. Okay, so for the presentations, uh, what we are going to do is, if you are scheduled for any presentation, then before presenting in the class, we will have a one-on-one -on -one discussion before the class, two times. And if you need more time, then we can meet multiple times as well. Ideally, it will be two times. So we will. what I will do is, I will review your presentation for the first time, see if you are missing anything, and then I will give you the feedback. And then the next meeting, you will do a rehearsal of the class presentation in front of me. And then the next day, or whenever your uh, talk is, you can do the presentation. So the schedule for this is, if your presentation is on Thursday, then uh, the review will be uh, at 2.40. Uh, this is not my office. This is a seminar room, uh, HEC 440. So keep note of this, because if you come to my office, I won't be there. Then the rehearsal will be Tuesday, 2 p.m. at EC 356. Again, it's a different room. It's not my office. So keep this in mind. Otherwise, I will be like looking for you, and you will be looking for me, and you will not find each other. And so this is like for the Thursday's presentation. So let's say if you are going to present this Thursday, then we might have met yesterday, and then today before the class. So keep this in mind. For Tuesday, we will do this like one week before. 
So it will be Thursday just before the class and this is my office 241 and the rehearsal will be on Monday. So for today's presentation it will happen on Monday yesterday. Again it's uh, HEC 440 2 p.m. Now another thing is so this rehearsal starts at 2 and it might last until 2.30 or maybe later. So the person who is coming for the review, it's at 2.40. So don't wait outside, just come inside the seminar room because you can join, that's perfectly fine. Okay. All right. So the projects, will have three projects and the first one will be similar to like what we had last year. It will be a basic CNN implementation. So we'll go through what a CNN is, the details of it, uh, the intuition behind it, why it works, how it works in the next lecture, and probably if we'll have time, I don't think we have time today, probably to be the next lecture. So we will cover the CNN in detail, and then the first assignment will be you'll have to implement that CNN uh, to solve a problem. I will assign a data set. It will be a very small data set, so you don't have to worry about like the uh, resources. And so for that assignment, uh, you will write a code. So the other thing is, I want to mention, so last year and before that, we enforced that you cannot use any publicly available code. And last year, some of the students actually did that. They used it deliberately, and they made some changes, and then submitted as their own. So that was not good. So this year, what we are going to do is, I mean, you are open to use any existing code, but just indicate the source, that this is the source from where I'm using the code, and don't try to like submit as you have written the code. But you are open to use any existing code. So that's perfectly fine this year. And that's for applicable for all the three assignments, right? So if it's a basic CN implementation, if you find implementation on GitHub, you can just use it. But put a note that this was like used from this GitHub repository, and that should be fine. Yes. You're referring specifically to like GitHub repos, not like open source libraries, correct? Open source libraries are fine. Okay. They were always fine. I mean, you can't write an open source library, so it was just for GitHub, right? Okay. So any other question for this? So, uh, will there be any deduction of marks, like if we use... Uh... No. As long as you are saying what the source is, it's perfectly fine. But just don't try to like sell it as your code. And if you're writing your own code, that's also fine. No worries. Okay. Any other question? All right. And coding, it can be like in any platform, whichever you're comfortable with. So there are no restrictions. Now, assignment two, I'm not sure about this yet. Last year, we, and even previous year, we asked like to implement one of the paper. And this year, I haven't found the paper yet. So most probably, it will be one of the paper. It will be not that difficult. And it's going to be either an architectural change. Uh, you will have to write the architecture, some changes in the CNN. Or it could be a loss function. So again, this is not going to be a very major project. And, but yeah, I haven't decided yet, so I will let you know when this is done. The third assignment, this will be the major project. And this year, I'm thinking, instead of asking you to implement a paper and extend that, I will like put some problems, open problems like in, in any domain, it could be activity recognition, very general problems. And you can choose one of those problems. And that, then you can choose like any paper of your choice to solve that problem. It's totally up to you. And then you can try to extend that. So it's like more flexible. It's not restricting you to like implement that particular paper and extend it. So that's too harsh. So it will be, it will be open. But it, could, it will be like in computer vision and the problems which we have assigned. It can't be from an NLP area or any different area or robotics. And that will be too vague. And again, so uh, it's, it's not decided yet. I will update you when that is done. So any, any question on this one? 
So this will be, yes. Do we have guidelines for the Guidelines, uh, I mean, we have guidelines from last year. They are not going to change much. So generally, what you will do is you will use the CVPR template, write report in that format, and you will follow the paper uh, structure. There should be abstract, introduction, then your overview, then your method, and then the experiments, results, and conclusions. So it will be totally in a paper format. So I will put a template on the web course. And in terms of pages, so the first one, I think it will be maybe two to, two to four pages. The second will, again, it could be three to, three to four or three to five pages. And this will be like six to eight or six to nine pages, so in that range. Okay. Any other question? So this first and second project, this will be individual. Last year, this was individual. Uh, the enrollment I saw, it was 36. But I don't think all of them are here. And so let me do a count. So it's around 30. So how many of you are like just auditing the course? Okay. And how many of you are like serious will definitely take this course? So yeah, if the number grows like beyond 25, then what I'm thinking is having that many individual projects, that's not a good idea. So what we will do is we will have groups for the final project. So that will be good for you guys as well. You can have discussions like between you and, and at max it will be group of two. It, it will never be group of three. So at max two. And so those two are laughing because those are three, I think. <laughs> 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 and of course, when you can have individual project, it's your choice. So if the number go, uh, goes beyond 25, then we'll permit like groups. Then you can form groups of two but you are uh, like open to have individual projects as well. And in terms of grading, it won't matter whether your groups or you are individual. So that's your own choice. It won't affect your grading. And of course, like in groups, I mean, you'll have to show something, do something. Otherwise, it will affect your grading. So that's fine. So what is, is the uh, idea of grouping that's fine with you, or what do you think? Because we haven't done that like before. It was always individual projects. Group projects, yes. So how many of you will prefer, like, if it's a group of two? OK, so we'll have some groups. That's fine. OK, so the project will, you will have to submit the code. And again, I, mean, I will not say that again. You should keep that in mind. When you're submitting your code, please use your student ID underscore your last name. Please follow that, because if I download the code, I don't know from where it's coming. And it's a long list. I'll have to like do that for all the 26 students. It will waste like at least one hour of mine. So that's not good. It happened last year. It happened before that. I don't know why they never follow this. And another thing about code submission is if you are using an online repository uh, from GitHub, maybe, then you don't have to download that GitHub and then submit the report. You can just say that it was taken from this GitHub, just submit the link. Right? And when you're submitting the code, only submit the source files, just the source files. Don't submit the data. It will be too big. Right? So data we will already have, so only submit the source files. So. We usually put a limit of 10 MBs because any source code you wrote, right, it cannot be more than 10 MBs. So that's a limit. And so for the report submission, you ask, like, you will have to use the CVPR 2020 template. 
you can find it here. And again, for all the three assignments, uh, the page limit will be different. But of course, there will be some range. So you don't have to worry too, too much about that. So the first one will be the smallest one. Then it will be a bit bigger. And this will be the final project. And yeah, so all the three reports will be in a paper format. As I said earlier, it should have all the sections, the abstract, introduction, so and then the method. You should also have the related work. It, I mean, you can make it smaller. You don't have to write very long. Maybe a paragraph or so is fine. You can talk about maybe a couple of papers. And then the experiments, results, then the conclusion. So please follow that format. It's easier for me to actually grade if it's that way. And it will be also useful for you because you don't have to worry about the organization of your report. And yep, that's it. For, and there will be no final exam. So on the final exam day, what we will do is we'll have presentations from each of the students. But these presentations will be very short. We call these spotlight presentations, so less than five minutes. If you can finish in two minutes, perfectly fine. But you won't be allowed more than five minutes. So this time is like for you to, for you to explain what you have done and what are your results. That's it. OK? So, and that's the statement of academic dignity. I'll have to show you this. That's the UCF golden rule. You might already know this. So it's really important. And even in your reports, so don't try to copy from other students. We'll find that out easily. So just write your own reports. Because even if you submit, you will get some numbers. But if you cheat, it will be a 0. All right, so some of you were interested in what topics we are going to cover. So we will cover semi-supervised learning, unsupervised learning, self-supervised learning, adversarial and meta-learning. So we are not going to have separate lectures for these, but what I can do is if we are discussing any paper related to, the, related to these topics, I can spend like maybe initial 15 or 10 minutes explaining what the idea is. And that will help you in maybe understanding the paper better. And again, so these topics mean it might be overlapping between papers because it's hard to separate these. It could be like you have a paper which have meta-learning, adversarial, and self-supervised learning all in one. And we'll also cover capsule network. So the presentation next week, uh, Tuesday, that is about capsule network. That's really interesting. And problems we will be looking into is activity recognition. This image and video synthesis, this is a really hot topic these days. And I'm planning to cover maybe three to four papers on this topic. We'll have some papers in segmentation. I think one paper next week, it's on segmentation, right? One of, I think, you guys is presenting. Yeah. Then this data imbalance problem, because the data set size is actually growing uh, these days. So what's happening is, these are not like lab curated data sets. These are natural data sets. And there it's like natural to have an imbalance in number of classes or the number of samples per each class. So this is a really interesting problem. We'll cover some of papers in this topic as well. And another interesting topic is, topic is this noisy data. Because what's happening is, since the size of data sets is growing, it's very hard to annotate those samples. I mean, you can spend a lot of, lot of money like to annotate a data set, something like ImageNet, but not everyone has that kind of money. So the new trend is what people are doing is they are just scrolling data from the web. And whatever tags or annotations are associated with those samples, they're directly using those. And because it's coming from the websites, from the social media, from YouTube, from Flickr, there's a lot of noise in that. The good thing is you can generate huge amount of data. You can get the annotations. So that's really good for your learning, for training your models. But that network will have a lot of noise. So this is like, I think, uh, it's, it's beginning to pick up pace. And I think in a couple of years, or maybe five years, 
it's going to be a very interesting topic because most of the data sets will have annotations which are noisy because we can't like ask people or students or Amazon Turks to always annotate data for us. Okay, so there will be no textbook and because we are discussing research papers. If you're interested and I will advise you if you are doing, if you're a PhD student, you're using deep learning, you should definitely read this book. This is available online, the PDF is free. You can also order the hard copy if you want, but that will be too expensive, I think. But the PDF is available, so I think you should definitely read this book. The other resources, uh, so we used to do this, uh, this tutorial on Keras. So I think a couple of years, Keras was really good. I mean, it's good these days as well, but I think PyTorch is picking up. And I think more people are using PyTorch uh, instead of Keras. But we do have this tutorial online. Uh, there will be a link on this slide. You can follow that. And so how many of you have coded in Keras? Oh, okay. And how many of you are still coding in Keras? Okay, that's consistent. And how many of you are uh, familiar with PyTorch? Okay, and still using PyTorch? Okay, anyone of you like using TensorFlow? Just TensorFlow. Not like as a backend, just TensorFlow. Okay. That's fine. I mean, if you want, you can have a look uh, in this tutorial. So do you think such tutorial will be required for this class? Because since most of you already know what deep learning is, so you might have already coded. So if you think you should have one such tutorial, raise your hand. Okay, good. So we save like one lecture for this. The other is, uh, this deep learning introduction, you can look into that. I will cover some part of this next uh, in the next class on Thursday. But I think this is a more uh, longer video. And then this is 2018 class. We also have 2019. You can refer to that if you want. And online, I mean, there are so many, so many resources. So these are just recommendations. And some of these are just, I think, blog posts. So that will be 15, 10 to 15 minutes read. So just go through those. So we are actually out of time. So deep learning, I mean, as you already know, it's actually uh, very popular these days. Everyone is using deep learning. It doesn't matter which field you are coming from. It could be like chemical engineering, it could be mechanical engineering, in all the fields it's being used. So one big implication this had is the number of publications, it's actually going very high. And the attendance in conference, it's growing very. So we have lots of data sets, startups you already know, most of the academics moving to industry because they're paying like a lot of money. You have so many software platforms available. GPUs, they are expensive, but still we need those. So we do have resources here, so you will not have to worry about like how to run your programs if you don't have GPUs. So how many of you have access to GPUs in your labs or in your own PCs? Okay, so it's most of you. All right, that's good. And So in computer vision, uh, these three are like the major conferences. Uh, these are the top venues where the best papers are published. So the papers we will cover in this class, some of them will come from these conferences. And the most recent is ICCV. It just happened in like November. So we'll have some papers from this, some papers from CVPR last year, I think. ECCV, so these two are like uh, happens uh, alternate year. So this will be 2018, so probably might not have any paper from this conference. And since you are graduate students, you already know this. So I can skip that part. So for journals, we have PAMI, we have this IGCV and CVIU. 
So these days no one is submitting to these channels and the reason is like the turnaround time it's more than one year so you don't want to wait that long. The good thing is if you have done good work then the noise in reviews that's almost I will say I mean, still there is some noise but it's not that high as we have in conferences because what's happening in conferences there are so many submissions that the reviewers are not available to review those. So they are inviting like all the students and everyone to review the papers and then there's a lot of noise. So even if your paper is pretty good, it will get rejected because of the bad reviews. And so these are some other good conferences for machine learning, NeurIPS, ICML, ICLR. We will cover some of the papers from these conferences as well. In fact, I think the paper, uh, the last next Tuesday, uh, that's from ICCV, which Kevin is going to present. And then after that, I think it's from NeurIPS, right? Yeah. Yeah, the next two papers will be from NeurIPS. So yeah, I think most of you might already know this. So what happened in 2018 is all the tickets to this conference, they were sold in 12 minutes. So you were not able to get like entry to the, entry to the conference. So it was huge. And this is like the attendance growth of this conference. Of, this is for CVPR. So until 2014, it's 2,000. And this year, it was like more than 9,000 people. So it's very crowded. And that was the number of submissions. This is last year's CVPR. So it's growing exponentially. So 2019, it's more than 5,000 papers. So to review those papers, you will need like, so usually there are three reviews for each paper. So you need like 15,000 reviews. So that's not possible. Therefore, like one review will review, let's say eight to 10 papers. And then you can assume that what kind of quality that will generate. So this is a big concern these days. So I think we are out of time. So probably I will cover uh, this in the next lecture. All right, any questions you have? All right, we can end it here. Thank you.